Yeah. It is April 26, 2021. This is Atlanta United FC Weekly, a home before dark podcast. Somebody at least. Oh, thank God. See, I just have a Yeti. I have my Yeti of water. It's actually my uh, my Ozark trail of water. Anyway, I am Tim Herb. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-hosts, Mr. Kevin Bradley and Dan James, both to my right. Hello. But this, what kind of, i just kind of keeping you guys on your toes, putting them in separate positions. I just, just mixing them up. I just moved the duct tape over to wherever Kevin's face is. So yeah, yeah, I oh, do yeah, the same that's thing. Fair. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's. I the think way everybody it does. Be. Yeah. yeah, that's what I do. Um, his contact photo shows up in my phone, just completely gray, just completely gray. Big, big Not gray even scale. his initials. It's just you went no, out and find a gray. It's a Twitter image. egg. It's a Twitter egg. Like he found a Twitter <laughs> egg icon Twitter. and just put it over my face. <laughs> Still hasn't been fertilized. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> Did you just, you just flip your camera off? Thank you guys for tuning in on this lovely Monday evening at our regularly regularly scheduled recording time, 8 o'clock. But it's a little late, and I apologize. It's my fault. It's I'm not going to let Kevin or Dan take the blame for this, and I'm probably going to be forced out. Nor would I. Uh, I'm not taking. I'm not taking the fall for you. I'm not the fall guy here. Yeah. I mean, I, I blame um, Dan, but I'm not taking that. Yeah. I'm, okay. I can I'm take gonna, the blame. I can take it. I'm going to be forced out to taking a job as a I don't know as like a president of an organization or something like that. It's like Dan. I know, I know. I tweeted, I messaged you guys earlier. It was I found the so, slow news day in MLS for it being such a really exciting season. The first two weeks, especially this past weekend, for like the for the guys to be like digging for a narrative that Lucy Rushton got forced out to take a general manager to be the second female general manager in MLS history, forced out to take that job. Yeah. Because Gabriel Heinz has said something to the effect of he's always going to trust his eye over the analytics or over sports science or whatever. And he's obviously exaggerating. And even Felipe brought it up later. But don't ever let the truth get in the way of a good story. And I think that's our uh, our, um, so our moral of the story tonight. Did he delete that tweet in the end? Because I tried to go back and find it. it was Charles, Charles Bain or Bohm? Yeah, whatever. That's a That's a lazy, stupid take. Um, oh yeah, no, he was responding much this to this entire show, Dan. So yeah, no, tread lightly, sure. tread lightly. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> so that's pretty much the definition of the entire show that we're about to do. So tread lightly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, call it out where it's where it's due. <laughs> as we Swedish built an hardcore. audience on terrible short-sighted takes. <laughs> as, <laughs> as the uh, as the Swedish hardcore greats refused would say, Dave or Dan, Dave. Dan, you got to pump the brakes. I like Dave better. Let's just call it. Dave's Dave, good. You know? Yeah, it's like it's yeah. like the how Jerry became Jerry in yeah. Parks and Recreation. I think yeah. we we'll just call him Dave from now on. That's good. Yeah. Dave. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in in the trap. We have some people who've been here very early. Um, Brian Daniels, Elliot Beavins, Stephen Perales. Uh, actually, Stephen Perales stepped in just to let us know he wouldn't be able to make it tonight, but excited for tomorrow's game and sh- uh, thrilled for the Chicago result. Uh, Thanks, Brittany S. Jeff Rollins, back for a second week in a row. Thanks again for coming back. We did something right last week. We got Jason Coles. I, I think he's just in. talking to his buddy and saying, hey, look at these idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Brown. My Kevin man. Brown, ladies. My man. My man. Farmer Kevin, Kevin over here. Kevin is like inspiring me to go live off the grid, to start growing my own food. To grow my fro back out because his is looking immaculate right now. I just, uh, I appreciate it. We also got Richard Gordon, OG Richard Gordon, and Michelle in the trap as well. Oh, it's a good Monday. It's a good Monday. Whenever we're coming in, rolling off of a, a result, I don't think any of the three of us guessed correctly, right? Uh, nobody guessed the result, but we. Oh yeah, no, we all guessed the not the score, but the result. We all, Dan and I both got the result correctly. Dan had 2-0 Atlanta. Got an extra point because of those two, he had Moreno and Heinemann scoring goals. So two points for Dan this week. I had 1-0 Atlanta. 
yeah, you had nil nil. So, who did you have? Uh, oh yeah, who did you who did you predict was going to score the draw? <laughs> That's what the joke was last week. Um, <laughs> I had one nil Atlanta with Barco scoring the goal, so two points for me as well. Currently, three points Kevin, two points Dan, no points Tim. Mm. Yeah, we, we shall Sounds see. Right. Shout out to uh, Elliot Beaven in the trap. I mean, he may have just bumped into his keyboard, keyboard, but he's saying WRU, which obviously means Rail- Wales Rugby Union, who won the Six Nations this year. So shout out to him recognizing that. <laughs> yeah. What? See, exactly. When you talk about Pokemon, that's the exact same face that I have. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the face everybody in the world has. <laughs> I my my headphones. Wales are rugby up, union. So you guys talk. I can't hear anything. I, I, right I now. think you two and the players on that team are the crashing. only people that would talk about awesome. that. Pokemon uh, I, is a global event. So it's rugby. <laughs> Pokemon greater than rugby. End of discussion. End of discussion. <laughs> So while Tim's getting his headphones squared away, um, as we start out with each and every one of these discussions, talking about the great result for Atlanta United this weekend against Chicago, first thing was lineup. Only – was it the same lineup? Yeah, it was the exact same lineup as what we saw before, right? Yeah. Only only change to the lineup was an appearance in which Barco and Joseph Martinez were sporting different hairstyles this week. Yeah, it was the what same. Was Marco's second week with without bleach hair. Bleach was it? Hair? I thought it was. Yeah. Just, I thought it was his first one. Okay. No, he got rid of it for the season opener. That's right. He's looking yeah, ruthless, this... though. Like he looks like a dude I actually wouldn't want to mess with. Yeah, he, like, he, he looks just kind of had... scary at times. No kidding. No kidding. He looked scary this weekend. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm so happy to see Barco <laughs> with his his effort. Um, even though it was kind of, it was a little bit of a fluky goal, but it was a beautiful goal. Um, his effort just on the pitch, just chasing everything down, directing people, telling Lissandro Lopez, who's like 15 years older than him, telling him what to do. It's great to yeah. see. Yeah. So I guess there isn't much to talk about on the lineup side of things. So we'll just jump right into the game. Um, I mean, I think there is something to be said. I think there's something to be said for the fact that it was consistent, right? Yeah. Like we, aside from the obvious of Lissandra Lopez getting taken out um, in the, in well, the coming also, weeks. Yeah. And it also plays to what Heinze was saying in his interview that we talked about at the start of the show, right? Like clearly he's seeing things during training and stuff like that, that, you know, Joseph, for whatever reason, just isn't there yet to be starting. I think he's certainly getting there. And we saw that in his performance this weekend against Chicago. It's really nice to see him getting reps and kind of, doing what I think has been lacking up top with Lopez specifically with somebody that's just like going to take a shot and, you know, hats off to Dan who had a great performance this week too. I thought like after not really performing much in past weeks, he comes in to the lineup as a late substitution as well and ends up having several really good distributions. One of which leads to Mulraney's goal and the other that, sets up Joseph to at least get his feet back under him to take a shot on goal. You know, I thought he had a great performance as well. It's, it's great to see Joseph. I mean, obviously he's not there yet, but it seems like there is progress happening with his fitness and his health, which is, I mean, we direly need that because we, we just, we're lacking that number nine. Who's really going to put things over the edge for this team. Um, yeah, I thought Dan played great. I'm hoping that he can do have more minutes now. I mean, he's been a sub these past two games, uh, and there was talk that that was for fitness, and it could be for fitness. He played 23 minutes. Well, it couldn't um, have come at a better time considering Lennon's injury this week, and and I think that he'll probably get the start tomorrow against Philly because I don't think Dan is or I don't think Lennon's going to be playing he's tomorrow. Not. He's out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Hyde's already. Already confirmed that. Well, I'm pretty inter. I'm assuming that it's going to be Damon uh, Mulraney on the right, and I'm really yeah. interested to see how that goes because we had, yeah. uh, you know, on the um, on Heinemann's goal, the 
twinkle toes of Jake Mulraney receiving that pass from Dam. I mean, yeah. that was an insane yeah. stepping around three guys yeah. um, and then just, you know, taking a crack. If he had scored that, I, I wish he would have scored it because that would have been, definitely been goal of the week. Yeah. Uh, but instead, it gets blocked out to Hyman and Hyman just buries it past, I think, the keeper and uh, a defender as well. So, yeah. Happy to see him react that way. Hyman, man, he's he's playing a lot better this season. It's I, I just you know I was kind of like messing around with a layout what I th- what a, for a lineup that I think that's going to be for tomorrow, which we can talk about later. But we've got a good amount of depth around this team, and it's just so good to see. Yeah, what were you thinking? What what are your, some of your first thoughts, Tim, about this weekend's game? Well, one, it is good to see. I, I I think it's kind of a prevailing sentiment for the whole team, but Emerson Hyndman specifically, it was a guy that like I, I'll admit I've been an apologist for in the past. I think that he's obviously had his ups and downs with Atlanta United last year. I don't know if it was I think we've talked about that. I don't know if it was COVID or whatever, um, or FTB playing him in the wrong position, what have you. But I think him along with Mulraney, I think, is a good example too of a guy that none of us, I think, whenever we saw him on the on the, on the lineup sheet in the first week or the first few games, was like, why is he? We have better players. Why isn't Dan playing that sort of thing? But Heinze is getting the best out of his players. I think he's playing them in the right positions too, and tactically putting them in the right spots. And I think it's paying off because, I mean, granted, Emerson Hyman missed. I guess what some would call a sitter, right? With that, yeah. With that, that uh, but it was—I mean, it was just outside it was bang, the right bang. post, man. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. it was just—it's not like he skied it. Like it was, it won't go down as a shot on frame, but it was, you know, six inches from going in. You know, it's—I mean, it was that close to being on frame, and like you said, it was just a bang bang play there. Yeah. And I think, yeah, Brittany's right. There were two goals or two two potential goals that he could have had a hat trick this weekend. But I digress. I think what you I, I think what you guys talked about is maybe my biggest um, my biggest takeaway or positive from this past game was Jurgen Dam's play because it's not just his play, but you saw it's it's crazy to me. It's hard to describe. I, I think a lot of his lack of progression or yeah, his career progression, I think has probably been mental because you could see that he has all the physical tools there, but even more so you saw how easily he was able to bait those defenders because they were afraid of his speed being able to cut back into the box. Like it seemed when you watched it, it looked like, and this is a credit to him for what he's able to get away with because of that, the timidity that he instills in those defenders is that it looked like high school cuts. Like it sounds, oh, it yeah. sounds like a, it's it very sounds, a lot, like very over the top eccentric, like fakes to make yes. somebody think he's going one way. Or, and then just, I'll put it, I'll, I'll put it for my FIFA players. It's whenever the game wants you to stop winning. And whenever you make a cut, you got your guy turns 180 degrees before he takes the ball with it. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> it, it was very, it very much looked like that, but it was because he get, he's able to afford himself so much time, whether it's reputationally or, or if it's just his, his skill alone, I think it might be a combination of, both, or is it if, just go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're you're fine. I was gonna say, or is it? I've always had this theory that, like, at a certain level of talent and skill, that everything reverts back to the most basic level being the most talented because everybody's playing so it's like poker, right? Like that's why people get so frustrated with people that come in playing poker that have never played. They're making ridiculous bets without having anything Mm -hmm. that they end up winning everything. It's like at a certain level of skill in soccer, like those high school jukes fool everybody because they're not used to seeing it regularly. (laughs) Dude, we had, and I remember this, I was, I was not very good at, at, at soccer. I didn't get started until June, like, until I was like, you know, whatever, 40 pounds overweight playing junior year of high school. That was whenever I first started playing. But we we had this guy come in in high or in college that was playing with us. A lot of seasoned people that played high school and in college ball in our pickup games. And he would come in, not not a clue what he was really doing, but would stop 
everybody every time they tried to dribble past him because one he was left footed and two he wasn't at the same skill level as everybody and people like the things that you just do weird things yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. Uh, and then to jeff rowland's point he's right chicago uh is was really open and it played right into dam's game um but to me like the obvious is barco just absolute stud on saturday engine of the team you know, scored an amazing goal. And then, but I, I think the biggest, I, but I expect that from him. What I didn't expect to see just based off of the last few performances was Jurgen Dam's performance and, right. you know, a limited capacity. And I, I hope that he's able to get to fitness if that's, if that's the issue. No, I, I completely agree. Um, so now that we start to kind of work into specifics of the game, maybe what do you guys think? Like work our way from defense forward on, on the pitch and kind of go from, I don't know, defense midfield forwards and just kind of evaluate from that standpoint. Maybe some of the things we saw or noticed that were positives and negatives. And then obviously we'll talk about positives and negatives that everybody sent to us over on Twitter as well. Sure. Yeah, I think so. We'll start at defense. <laughs> uh, so we'll do positives. Yeah. Positives and negatives. Uh, Go ahead. All right. So I'll start with positives. Uh, largely another good, pretty solid de- performance from the defense. Um, Miles and walks just um, playing really, really well together. Um, I guess the negative is we saw a couple of times with those, you know, Chicago would have those, uh, just annoying crosses straight across the goal line where uh, defenders would miss them and then they ultimately scored. Um, they were right across where... the floor. Like they just yeah. complete. I mean, there's no excuse for two, three defenders just all whiffing on the same ball that they're all in a position to play as it just rolls from touchline to touchline basically across the 18. It's just ridiculous. And it happened multiple times. I completely agree yeah. with that, Dan. Like that's – you can't – if you're going to play fast and loose like Atlanta's been doing on defense, you can't let those easy pickup plays slide by you because you're going to get punished by them. And Atlanta's lucky they didn't get punished by more. Yeah, I thought – I I think so too. They need to – I don't know because I don't think we've seen many of those in the uh, in the past four three games that we've played before Chicago. Um So it was just like a new thing that they needed to deal with. You know, we've been really solid um, defending aerial balls um, and have just been a real rock at the back. Uh, Sosa obviously has been a big part of that. Um, I thought he, I mean, I guess, I mean, he, I thought he played really well again on the weekend, but from the rank, from the ratings and everything, it was his worst performance. So I guess that's, uh, and partly that was, I feel like they, they were almost like avoiding that sort of area of the of the pitch anyway and trying to concentrate more down the flanks. Um, but with uh, Bello was I don't remember too much about Bello to be honest with this game. Um and I guess he had an incredible bad. shot. He had the one shot up. I mean, in the second half, I feel like he was a little all over the place. Like he was kind of a Swiss army knife on the field. You know, we saw him moving mm-hmm. from the left side of the field over to the right side. And in midfield, he ends up taking a shot on goal at one point in time. You know, he had a couple crosses. I think he had a really interesting second half as far as his positional awareness and where he was at on the field. It seemed like Heinz, I think Tim even <laughs> texted me. He was like, I think Heinz just told Bella, just go play. Just go, just go, just go have fun. Like he's just everywhere. So what's well, what, you know, it's a luxury that Sosa can afford us that he yeah. can, you, that, you know, he's there to, to pick up when the guys go up the flanks. I'm really bummed to, that. Um, I don't know if there's been any confirmation whether Lennon got a concussion or anything like that, um, but he had that big old nice black eye. Looked like um, he came out of those fights Saturday night is what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope he's not down for too long because he's he's great to have on the pitch. Uh, he still instills so much confidence down that right flank. 
So. Oh, Elliot even makes a good point. And Tim, I want to throw this over to you. He says that uh, Gerd did good coming off the bench. Obviously, we had the, the loss of Lennon after the injury. But whenever you talk about defense and positive and negatives, what were your thoughts on Gerr coming in, get it, getting his first play, play time for United this season? Not not to play on stereotypes or anything like that, but I, I it kind of recalls uh, Lawrence Wyke for me, like his his ability to come in and just do a job, like not not to just not to just uh, compare him to another platoon Englishman, but I mean <laughs> he came in, he did a decent enough job. I think it was noticeable that Brooks Lennon was there, but you're not going to or was not there, but you're not going to be able to replicate his output yeah. and his his ability to um, connect with the team and that sort of thing. For him, you're really asking him because of the absence of a, such an important player like Brooks Lennon to essentially go in there and don't fuck it up. And he didn't fuck it up. And I, I think I was fine with that. I think it's good to know that we have a young guy that we just signed to a professional deal a couple weeks ago, right? If I don't even remember how long ago it was that we signed him, but it was, it was fairly recent. And he, um, he came in and I, th I thought he did well. He didn't put a foot wrong or anything like that. He didn't do anything spectacular. Um, but I think he had one cross into the box. Towards, I, maybe towards I, the back post. I'm not sure. And to your point, it was, I mean, it was, he came in, he did a job. He held the line, you know, yeah. um, th there wasn't much that I really have as a takeaway as something overtly stand out ish for positive or negative. Once I, so, yeah. you know. I think uh, cause Gurr came on what it was just after halftime, so he played it was half time, minutes yeah. or half time. So he had 26 touches, which is about half of what Brooks Lennon had in the first half. Um, yeah. he had he was 83 percent accurate passes, uh, he had two crosses, but none were accurate. And then he had three long balls with one being successful. But uh, other than that, I don't, it, I don't think we really saw much that he can do like you said he just came in um sort of <laughs> essentially a warm body but wasn't really tested that much yeah so, other yeah. thoughts on defense tim well, actually i wanted to bring up now that Brittany s pointed it out and just really to irk mike mike german because he hasn't played a single lick of soccer for us yet talk about alan franco where she says alan franco time please where i don't know if you guys saw i, I don't I think it was with Felipe, uh, mm -hmm. one of the questions that he asked Heinz and Heinz has said he needs to get minutes. Alan Franco is the type of play. He said he's the type of player that we're going to have to find minutes for. He's going to have yeah. to play. Eventually he's going to have to play and kind of not to make you guys fight again, but it kind of <laughs> goes back to that, that argument that you guys had. Um, that's what it was. Kevin Brown's correct. He said, Heinz said Franco is a player that needs games. Yeah. So, uh, Elliot Beaven has a good point. I wonder what you guys think about it. I expect Joseph and Franco to start when playing Philly tomorrow. Do you guys expect both of them to get the start? Because personally, while I understand why Joseph isn't starting, just the 15 minutes that he gave you, I mean, he played a little bit longer than that, but let's just say 15 minutes he gave you at the end of the Chicago match was – in my opinion, better than the 60 you got out of Lopez prior to that. Like I I'm especially, you know, with getting reps and wanting to get Joseph in there of the two, I think it's a no brainer for Joseph to get a start. I mean, I don't expect him to play a full 90 and I certainly don't expect him to be a hundred percent, but that seems like a no brainer for him to get the start tomorrow night. In my opinion, what do you guys think about him and Franco getting starts tomorrow? I think, yeah, I think they do get starts tomorrow. Uh, I think it'll be interesting if Joseph gets a start to see how much he can do uh, in terms of how long he can go in the game. Is he a 60-minute guy or a 75-minute guy? I don't think he's going to play the whole game. I think he's going to no. get subbed off at some point. Uh, but the thing is, if he, if he can go like at least 60 or 75 minutes, then you've got um, – so who was on the bench on the weekend um, – so you've got Eric Lopez. Obviously, you've got um, Lissandro that can come in to replace Joseph. And having a guy like Eric Lopez on the bench who can run at defenses that are more tired, 
uh, that may be a better option ha- having him come off the bench. But and has he, he could, played at all yet this season? Yeah, he yeah he in came Chicago. in. He subbed out for. Oh, that's uh, right. That's right. Oh. He did come in late against Chicago. That's right. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, and immediately it was. Immediately it was, a was it, yeah, and immediately yeah. It was aggressive getting into their third. Will on the ball, yeah. like. Oh yeah, no, definitely. No, now that well, you say that, yeah. He's got a point to prove. I mean, he. I mean, when did he come in? Like, he's been here a year now. Yeah. He's needs to show the manager. He needs to be dogged and just run down everything, yeah. uh, and do whatever he can. Um, and you know, the last time before Chicago, I think the last time he played was against, uh, club America in the champions league in 2020. Um, and he put in a pretty good shift. I think he did 45 minutes, but it was, uh, it was good to see. So that, yeah, I agree with you. I think you'll start, I think we'll see largely the same front three stroke four that we saw this weekend. Um, I personally think the uh, lower end of the field is going to be more mixed up, but we can get we can get to that a little later if yeah. we want. Any other closing thoughts on defense before we move into the midfield? Feed that Tamagotchi, Dan. <laughs> I'm going to tell Andy to check his blood sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think I have any other thoughts. I mean, it was another solid performance. Like you said, there were nervy moments, and there, but those yeah. were the moments that I felt like we saw in years past. Goals go in. And they're not going in right now. So Boy. either luck yeah. or some got yeah. lucky with a post. Uh yeah, yeah. and that was gonna be my point. It wasn't necessarily anything against the defense, but my God, the chances that Barrich had with absolute garbage for setup or a position to play on the ball, for him to have two one that chips Guzan who comes off his line and hits the left side of the post, and then the other one in the first half, which was just a much better shot. I thought like if that had gone in, that would have won goal of the week. Like his back is to the ball and he somehow pulls his right foot over to catch it enough just to get it to scoot off of the left post or the right post. Um, two really, really good shots by him with nothing to really build off of um, and nothing against the defense on either side of those. It's just heads yeah. up play and, and making the best out of what he had to work with. So. So Robert we play Barrett that, is a we play, AAA title in MLS. Yeah. yeah. We we play in Chicago July 3rd. Um it's not going to be I think it's going to be a lot tougher game because we don't do well in Chicago and there's going to be a book out on us uh by that time. And uh, like you say Kerak, I mean Barrett is so Yeah. He can make he's like a wonder. He makes stuff out Dude. of garbage and yeah. uh, it's, yeah. it's not going to be fun playing them next time. Yeah, it was wild. I mean, that was yeah. his, his performance up top was certainly a standout for Chicago and ne- wasn't necessarily anything against our defense. Um, I, I don't have anything else to add that you guys haven't already mentioned. So um, moving into midfield, uh, maybe let's just start with the biggest standout, I think, um, with Barco. Obviously, we, we already talked about him a little bit. Talk a little bit about the goal who – is up for goal of the week this week. You know, 17s are going to do their thing. It's already started on Twitter, so we can go ahead and count that as a lock. But um, one of the four goal of the week contenders, and maybe we'll take a little side trek on this before we come back to the midfield. Have you guys seen the other nominees for goal of the week? Particularly, have you seen Nani's goal? I don't need to. Dude, <laughs> so dirty. Just so dirty. I don't think it was a better goal by any stretch. Like it, it was just a heads up play, but just ball pops up and is going like on his heel. Basically, he just picks his heel up and just heals it in, just chips over the keeper with his heel oh, from the man. six. Just absolute fill. Like it, it was really, really nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, Barco's got to get it right. Like, and, yeah, last time I checked the voting, I think there had been 5,200 votes and Barco had like 68% of the votes. Yeah, so it's yeah. just like old times. Good job, Atlanta United fans. Yeah. Uh, that and I don't think it was on that goal. I think it was the next goal that happened. But um, goal celebrations for days last or this past weekend between Barco running over to Joseph first after he had scored the goal and then even seeing – Gabriel Hyde to celebrate after that second goal. I think it was on the sidelines. It, that's got to get you excited, right? Oh, absolutely, man. I've got, I can't wait. It's it's starting off so well. Yeah. 
But other than that, I mean, midfield, uh, we talked a little bit about Hyman. Again, I don't really have much negative to say about the midfield in general this weekend. Um, I think that across the line, everybody's kind of playing their part. I know that Sosa is kind of back and forth between defense and midfield, and I think that he's certainly been a standout. The fact that this was his weakest performance to date and was still, by and large, a – a great outing. I, I can't really point to anything to say he was out of position or a liability or anything like that over the course of his play this week. But I think he's certainly, I think he's the the biggest standout this season out of signings and has made the biggest impact in this lineup hands down as far as what he's contributing and what he's done to open up things from the midfield back to the defensive line and and to shift that ball forward into midfield and, and going forward and allowing other defenders to do the same. Yeah, if he if he keeps this up, he's gonna win newcomer of the year, hands down. Yeah. I mean it's he's such a fan favorite as well. I mean it's Yeah. He's I mean no he already feels like my favorite player and I've seen him play four games, which is ridiculous. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's just great to see. I love it when he gets higher up the field. Cause I'm surprised to see him there and he's, you know, he's trying to attack, you know, he's building the attack from the up opposing half, which is fantastic. No, absolutely. Um, um, yeah. I think Heinemann, I thought Heinemann played in a, put in a pretty good shift. Um, obviously the goal helped him out. Uh, Barco was obviously fantastic. I guess it's kind of weird how we're like doing defense midfield because they're all all the all of them are kind kind of just like you could they're say shifting and right, pulling. Say, and, you yeah. say well, Bello and Lennon are basically right. midfield right. as well. And um, yeah, I mean Barco was standout. We talked about him. What do you think, Tim? Great stuff. Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I don't have anything negative to say either. I mean, Sosa is, I, I think, again, I think he's our metronome. Like, I think he is he, the way, whatever, the way we go is is how he's going at the time. And I I have not seen him really put a foot wrong. I I don't know how he sweats so much so early on in a game. Like, his, he's constantly. That's got to like, be water, man. That's got to yeah, be water. Yeah, he thinks so. Like, they, the, they, they pan to him in, like, the first couple minutes, and Angie's like, how is he already that sweaty? Like, <laughs> Stacey said the same thing. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, speaking of newcomer of the year, I think he might win it. But what we have to be aware of is the fact that, I think voters are going to forget that Chicharito played last year. I didn't. That's why I picked Galaxy in my questions for who would win if not Atlanta United this year, because he is certainly proving to be every bit of the billing two weeks in. It's still a long season to go, but five goals in two games, man. My God. On pace for 70 goals this year. He's going to do my it. My God. So. Yeah. No, Sorry, I, I don't I, know if I am, it's me or you all, but. I keep you guys keep cutting out. It might be your AirPods. I think it's you. Bye bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so nothing else to say about midfield up top. Um, thoughts on Lopez? What what's Atlanta do going forward? You know, Point what's Heinz to do going head. forward? You know, I mean. Those, I don't like, I, like you said, those those 15 minutes we got from Joseph are the closest that I've seen. It's like, oh, so we have far people that are gonna form. try to put a goal in, like do what you expect a striker to do. Like, I've just I don't know. I just have not seen any of that out of Lopez yet. And we've had at least what this is six games into the season now, like including CCL play with him starting or having four. substantial minutes. Is it just four? Yeah. Yeah, four games. That's right. But four games in, you know, the fact that you just don't really see him either being in position to take a shot on goal or creating positions for others to do that. Like, I just, it just seems really forgettable for somebody that you are expecting to be that shot generator or that engine up top to start to create something. Like, that the fact that your, your starting striker, is one of the only people from the midfield up that doesn't have a goal <laughs> so far. It's a little shocking, I feel like, you know? So, yeah, I don't know. I wonder if he is 
if he is being put in because of his experience and potential leadership qualities until Joseph can put in the minutes because then yeah. obviously he's got no, he's got yeah. the uh, the reputation to to have all that before you bring in a less experienced uh, forward that we have on the on the that makes um, sense. Oh my gosh, what am I trying to say? Roster. Thank you, Roster. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I saw Conway uh, and Tyler Wolf played with the twos this weekend. Okay. So, what so do you think? To use on the bench. I mean, what what do you do with Lopez going forward? I mean, what are your thoughts on his performance? He so becomes, far? yeah. I I think it's been serviceable. I think that we you've yeah. seen you've seen glimpses of where his quality was whenever he was in his prime. I think that he has, he definitely has skill and quality. That's never going to go away when it comes to hold up player, being able to, uh, to distribute, but I don't, it's, he's just not, he's not it. Um, he's not, he's not there to be leading the line. I think that maybe he could, I don't know. We've always been looking for that change of pace striker to to relieve Joseph at the end of games. That never really ends up panning out between Kenwin Jones and Vasquez Shirts. was the closest we got. Yes, Vasquez, Romario Williams, like those guys, and they never and really arguably played. last year out of um, what's Adam his, John? Uh, yeah, no, uh, well, yeah, Adam John. But I was saying Gallagher. I thought had better like qualities up top. I to miss potential. man. I miss John Gallagher. He could right. Have been like I feel right like now. he yeah. would be the stand-in if Joseph was out. Like I feel yeah. like I would rather see him in the lineup right now than what we're getting out of Lopez personally. No, agreed. I think yeah. I think we've seen maybe. Obviously, we don't see them in training. I don't know what Joseph looks like over the course of a, a full training session. And it might be Joseph saying it too. Like, I mean, he could very I, I easily doubt it. Be driving that. I <laughs> doubt it too. I doubt it too. But and and because Gabriel Heinz denies science, he's a science denier. He hates statistics. <laughs> he hates health science. Yep. It's it's not him. He's not listening to the doctors. He's a climate no. change denial denier <laughs> too. <laughs> Wait, I just want to go back to that for a second. Like, what climate what, change? Well, Yes. <laughs> Just like what, a sh what it's such a shitty way, in my opinion, to lower the bar or to just shit on the accomplishment that Lucy Russian had in well, it, getting it, that GM it, position. It ends up crushing two. It, it's you end so up getting stupid. this collateral damage as a result of making a statement like that. Like, while trying to make some sort of point or accusation at the, you know, at the expense of Gabriel Heinze or the club, you also negate the merits and quality of Lucy and what she was achieving and getting that position and what it meant for her and for women in the sport in general. Like it just, it's, it's just a very short sighted comment in general. Yeah. Super, super stupid. Anyway. Yeah, what a I'll, bell end. Yeah. I'll move on. I'll move no. on. I promise. So uh, people in the trap are talking about how uh, the, the fans certainly helped spur on Joseph, they felt like, this weekend. None of us were at the game this weekend. I heard there were no hot dogs, which is really the – the talking that point was, I feel like needs to be addressed tonight. That was one of the negatives we got on Twitter, which we were going to get to, but it is one that we should talk about because that was one of the big selling points of Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the first place. Exactly. So another thing about the attendance, which hasn't really been discussed or publicized, is that season ticket holders have access to all of their tickets for the games this season, starting with the next home game. So – Still no official announcement from the club, but the assumption is full attendance starting with the next home game on, what, May 15th? Is that what it is? Yeah. May 12th? Yeah. All, overnight, yeah. It's, I think people – the first person I saw post it was Robin Seguini on, on Twitter. She was like, did anybody else check the app and see that you have tickets for the entirety of the season now in your pocket? And it just – I don't know. It kind of – first of all, I, I love my club – I think it's run very well, but this has been kind of a debacle between the lead up to the opt-in, opt-out that they gave people 
not knowing what attendance. It was just quote unquote limited capacity, which last year was a lot less than it is right now in terms of people feeling comfortable, um, how they were going to handle things. And then now just to find out that we're going to be moving to full capacity starting yeah. Can, like it, it, seemingly we're, we're assuming this obviously from all these tickets dro- dropping in our, uh, in right. our app, but that you were only op, you were only filling out that survey based on limited capacity. But now that the stadium is fine, opening up to full capacity, they could not, it does not appear that they care that there's a pandemic outside and that people might still be uncomfortable going to these games just because they're able to open them up and seemingly do them in a quote unquote safe manner. I don't know. I mean, based off of, I don't know, based off of pictures that we saw, um, yeah, and Michelle was. She said she was at the game, and fans took their masks off as soon as they hit their seats. It was infuriating, um, and I saw reports of you know people supposedly holding their beers the entire game so that they can get through the you know I'm drinking. I, I don't have to wear my mask. Uh, yeah, type of thing. yeah, it's tricky, man. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen this season as far as resales and you know, season ticket valuations going into next season and everything else. I I already fully expect that season ticket prices are going to go up again next year because they're going to recoup the the sunk costs of last year to begin with, much less whatever may happen over the course of this year. Um, And and to Kevin Escobar's point, I don't know that other clubs are handling it it any better. Um, I don't, but – I think there's still, I don't think that that diminishes any frustrations that people may have about the situation where it's like people that feel uncomfortable with going during this situation have no choice but to go to the resale market, which doesn't benefit people or a waiting list that already exists or markups on tickets for people that want to get in versus the team taking that initiative and stating or allowing people to you know, opt out for the, you know, I I don't know. I don't know what all the solutions are right now or what the right answer is, but I think that it's something other than we're just doing limited attendance for one game and then we're just full bore everybody back in, you know? So for the non-season ticket holders, um, what is the problem with them dropping all the tickets in the, in the app? Is it because they're just assuming you're going to go or is it some sort of, opting yeah. out because of they were prorating prices or anything or no 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 there's they they didn't they didn't give people the option to opt out of and roll their tickets over the way that, that we did last year they could only it. opt out of the limited attendance games yes. and by putting all of the season tickets into everybody's accounts even those that opted out it goes to say that like we're going back to full capacity on the next game, whether you want in or not, like you're still on the hook for those tickets. And so whether you feel comfortable or not at this juncture in the middle of May, when there's still issues or not, you're we're back to open, we're back to open and roll. Like we're back to capacity. So even if you opted out, you're still, you've got your tickets, you're paying for them and you're not getting any sort of a credit or kickback going into next season, whether you go or not. So if you opted out of a limited capacity, you got a you got a credit or or whatever. Right. right. Gotcha. Okay. They at least like that's what happened last year, basically. Was everything from last year got a credit back to this season based on the pandemic. This yeah. season was a similar thing. If you opted out of the limited attendance games, they were going to credit you going into next season. However, by pushing all of those tickets out to everyone's apps, starting with the next home game, it's full attendance and back to normal. So there's going to be a huge market for resale tickets. Prices will be high because demand is really high right now. It's not going to fix any of the problems that were already systemic to resale prices and tickets and attendance prior to the pandemic, nor is it rectifying or resolving the issues during the pandemic as he's a ticket holders had. So. And, and me as a season ticket holder right, with a, with a pregnant wife, am I, am I going to be punished for selling my season tickets that have been oh, exactly, I, I, we bought them, right? They're not forced upon me, but in a way they're, they're, they're there for us with no option to opt out or roll a credit. 
And I, I've heard of accounts being, again, I don't know if this is all. I, I was going to say, I had the same thought the other day. Like, is it just, did, does anybody know somebody that had season tickets? This, and if, if you do, whether you're in the trap or you're listening to this on iTunes, find us on Twitter at home before dark. That's B in the number four. I, I've heard the same thing, Tim, like that if you sell too many of your season tickets, they, they revoke your season tickets going into the next year and put them up for sell or for sale for those that are on wait lists or whatever. And your season ticket privileges get revoked. I want to know if that's a legit thing because I have the exact same fear, Tim, that like, if I don't feel comfortable going to a full attendance game until whatever the date is, whether it's June, July, August, all the way up until October, whatever that date is, if I resale, 10 tickets what's the threshold are they just all of a sudden next season my season tickets are gone and they've gone to somebody else because of the situation that we were given it and i had like or am i just on the hook for something that i'm not even experiencing or doing you know what i mean yeah man that's that's a real sticky one i mean they sh- surely they should let some sort of amnesty go in terms of transferring and selling tickets in this and potentially even next season. But um, I mean, you don't know, maybe, and maybe when they first said that maybe it was just like an empty threat. Yeah. Yeah. And really like they wouldn't know unless you sold them through Ticketmaster. I wouldn't think because otherwise you could just be gifting them to people if you sold them on the Facebook marketplace or whatever. But I think there's a lot up in the air. We're assuming things and we're, we're talking about stuff that may not be the case, but I think it's a fair assumption if everybody has their tickets, if all the season ticket holders are now holding their season tickets for the rest of the year, I think it's a safe assumption that that's the plan. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, Closing thoughts on the Chicago match. What other thoughts do we have or, or talking points before we start talking about Philly and New England? It was a good win. Agreed. Yeah, happy to to get a, a 3-1 win. Um, kind of the first real shaky things we've seen at the defense. Um, but fortunate to finally be finishing some chances. But it was against a formidable attack. That's the thing where Mm -hmm. I go back and I'm saying maybe it's not so bad that we were shaky and maybe we weren't shaky necessarily as much as they made us look shaky with their uh, their performance. Um, Do you want me to go through the quick positives and negatives from the game? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good before we we switch gears. All right, Uh, and we ask this now every week for you guys to drop a positive and a negative on Twitter from the games. And uh, we had Andy Watkins uh, said positive possession with a plan. I like it. Negative. High press holes uh, left us scrambling. And then inconceivable, he put a new one in there, and I'll give it to him just because he's a, a good a good buddy and longtime listener of the show. Uh, he said inconceivable reports of no hot dogs, which we, we alluded to. Uh, Elliot Beaven, positive scoring goals, and negative allowing a goal, or allowing one goal. Uh, Joey, a.k.a. Haletto, Giletto, uh, saying positive. We're fun to watch. Uh, negative. I only get one positive. <laughs> uh, Gabe Lajas saying a positive. Barco Lasso. I think that's that's pretty great. I do I do love that. Um, and then negative. Bally Sports South. I don't know. I liked Maurice Adu on. Uh, on I don't call. think it was necessarily a comment about the um, commentating. It was maybe the quality. Like my point about Valley Sports South was A, it kept cutting in and out every now and then you'd get mm. some weird like jogs and, and lag in the feed. And then the other thing was it's on an HD channel and it looked like it was just standard definition for most of the game. Like I I don't know if it was just me, but watching it live, I was like, this doesn't look like it's in HD. Like it still looks a little I don't know, pixelated or out of focus or something like that. Like the cameras just look really jarring, which is just made even more evident the state of the turf in Mercedes Benz. Tim, I texted you. I mean, maybe it was just me, but it it looks looks like that turf is starting to show its age a little bit three (laughs) years in. And I think the the camera stuff at at this point, um, I think it was only exacerbated too by me watching UFC later where they have the new Sony cameras. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about? The end zone cameras from NFL. You know, that looks more real than real life. Right, Uh, right. Yeah. And, and then watching that, I was like, okay, we need no. that in soccer. Yeah. Uh, the Bally yeah. Sports camera looked like it was just high ultra contrast. And as a result, just made everything yeah. 
ridiculously pixelated. It was the cameras that I used to film basketball games with in, in college. Yeah, um, exactly. Alex, Alex Morrison, positive surf shark and ESPN plus. If you know, you know, uh, yes, I know. And, uh, anybody who doesn't know, um, I was on the fence about which VPN to get. I had a lot of suggestions for Nord and me being really cheap and getting one positive recommendation from Andy Watkins and a free 30 day trial because of his referral. Um, Got two years or I guess 25 months for like 60 bucks. And because I'm using an Apple TV box, can't put the VPN on there, but it works out because you can set smart DNS from your IP address inside of your account in the on the online dashboard for Surfshark. Take that, manually put it into your Apple TV, restart your Apple TV. It thinks that you're routing your traffic through London, UK and it says, okay, you're not blacked out anymore. You can watch the game. Just I took a different route. I took a different route and I went ahead and caved and got Xfinity. And so all I do is just press a button, it comes on, and then I go to the channel and it's there. <laughs> because I said, fuck it. I was done with it. I, I finally just caved. It's I, I pray for everybody having to deal with this right now. I don't know that there's a right or wrong way to go and everybody's going to have to take their path. I'm glad that there is a solution though. And certainly the surf shark ESPN plus is the only valid one that I've heard of it so far. Literally. And I'm sure I think Nord and express, I don't know if express has the smart DNS, but I know Nord and a couple other ones do too. So whatever has smart DNS, as long as the New Jersey DNS did not get me far enough out for whatever reason, it didn't work, but I put in the four on one and it worked no problem. It was literally like a 10 minute from start to finish process. And honestly, I didn't even have to install the software on my computer. I just went to my portal and rerouted my uh, my IP address or the DNS or gave me a new DNS that I can hit through my IP address. And, uh, so Tim, is it like it's a 30 day free trial or do you have to pay up front and it's a 30 day money back? Thing? Yeah, that, yeah. No, okay. yeah, it's, it's definitely that. They don't, these companies, like I did the same thing with Express and I think I might've gotten my money back the first time I did it. But yeah, it's, it's one of those pay up front, you know, tell them you're unhappy, talk to like 10 people probably get your money back. But so I um, found something weird. I don't know if people know this, but uh, I don't have a VPN. I have Hulu and ESPN plus, and I can watch the Spanish language Atlanta United stream on ESPN plus without a VPN or anything. Oh, interesting. So I probably won't be now that I've said it, but uh, <laughs> I don't, it's weird. Anyway. Okay. Um, else and on a couple, yeah, sorry. Negative from Alex uh, Morrison. Lennon's right eye. I think that's accurate too, because we lose him for a game. Kendrick, we won. This is positive. No hot dogs at the Benz. And then, uh, yeah. And then he and Sean were, you know, uh, very upset going back and forth about the hot dogs. He said, uh, Sean said they had him waiting at halftime or waiting well into the second half, knowing damn well they didn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> all right so uh tomorrow second or moving into quarterfinals with the home match right tomorrow's in kennesaw is that right mm -hmm. sorry Brittany yeah. is in the trap is spanish broadcast available every time i have no idea Brittany. um so first first leg of the quarterfinals here at home against philadelphia union who outside of their CCL performance, hasn't had much to speak of as far as results in the first two weeks of MLS play. What are you guys thinking going into that matchup? And has that run of form got you feeling a little bit more positive going into a home leg against a, a team that was on a really hot streak last season and certainly performed well those first couple of weeks in CCL? No, I'm not confident. Um Philly are really good. I know they've had those two. Um, well, the first one against the defending champions, Columbus Crew, get a nil-nil draw, and I believe that was on the road. And then losing to Inner Miami was kind of strange. But they um this is this is gonna be interesting for me to see how we set up against them. So we've got uh, they have two strikers, they they've played the same lineup in all of their games, the two CCL games, Columbus and Inter Miami. So they've started with a back four and then they play 
a four-man diamond midfield with two guys up top. So you've got Casper Shubilko and Anthony Fontana. So because we have because they have those two forwards, I think that we're going to see a, a back three of Franco, Walks, and Miles. Uh, and if you put Sosa in front of them to kind of run interference, I think that is going to stop those two forwards plus this guy, uh, Jerimo Montanero, Montanero, who is, he's legit good. He's got an average rating of 7.9 throughout all their games. Um, he has three key passes per game, which is huge for an attacking midfielder. Um, so he's been very good. Um, also, so behind him in the center defensive midfield at the bottom of the diamond, you've got this Jose Martinez kid. Um, he's averaging 4.5 interceptions a game, and you can compare that to Sosa's 1.5 a game. So this Jose Martinez kid is, he's legit. So they've got this strong spine at the bottom of the diamond and at the top of the diamond with the two guys up top. So, but what the diamond forces them to do is play kind of narrow. So Bedoya and Flack, who have also been playing annoyingly good, um, they kind of, when you compare them to Atlanta United's wingers, they're a more pulled in, whereas our wingers like to use the whole of the pitch and kind of just run up and down the touchline. So it seems like they will be able to have more numbers in the middle of the, of the midfield, which is good because in our regard, because we kind of play more through the flanks, so it's going to open up a little bit of space. But then you're going to be dealing with um, Mabezo and Kai Wagner, who like to bomb up and down. It's kind of like what we saw with with Tata when um, we would have our fullbacks just go all the time. But if you can like, if you can pin those guys back and kind, and I think you know if you've got Dama Moreni on one side and Moreno and Bello on the other, those can easily deal with two fullbacks. So, and then if they can have, so I feel like we kind of have a setup advantage if we play that way, but if we don't, if we just have a back four, I'm not sure how much we can deal with t those two guys and essentially three guys that they have pushing forwards up top. So I've got a setup in a back three of Franco, Miles and Walks with Souza, Barco, Bello, Mulraney across the middle, and then Moreno, Joseph, and Dam at the top. I think I want to put Ibarra into this because I feel like he's going to be the type of guy who's going to go in and, like, hack down some legs in the middle of the midfield because they're going to have essentially almost four guys in the middle of the midfield, whereas we're going to just have two, which yeah, is going to, you that. know, yeah. again, focus around on the flanks. But then if we have the anchor of Sosa in front of Manco, Franco, Miles, and Walks, then you've got more of a, a stronger fortification at the yeah. back to deal with those extra guys and them playing through the midfield the whole time. So it's going to be a really interesting matchup. It's awkward because we've got the first leg this time at home. So right. we want to be, you know, we want to like score multiple goals to get, because yeah. going up to Philadelphia, it's going to be, that's going to yeah. be a really difficult game because yeah. I think they're at full capacity now. Yeah. Um, so yeah. all that said, what's your score prediction tomorrow, Dan? Um, I don't know that Tim, Tim, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you and I are going to have anything more in depth than what Dan just said. <laughs> no. <laughs> so he just gave me a full blown scouting report. Good thing. I mean, based on hindsight, I don't base any of my opinions on stats. It's just how I feel based on performance. So with that, yeah. what are your score predictions, boys? <sighs> I really hope we can hold them off in a way goal. And I want us to get at least two. Um, if we could do two nil, I will be very happy. So you're saying two nil. Atlanta. Yes. Who's getting the goals? Um, I'm going to say Mulraney finally gets one. And then I'm going to say Joseph gets one. Okay. With a Barco assist. Okay. Oh, well, we're not doing points for assists, but I applauded anyway. So to Jeff's point, yeah, it's a bad game to be missing Lennon. It is. But then we've got that's where our depth comes in. You know, yeah, so we, we still got have... Dam and Mulraney over there, and I feel confident with both of them servicing in. Even and if Moreno's shifting over there, like, yeah, yeah. 
Tim, what do you think? Uh, I think 2-0. I think especially if we have – if we bolster our defense with even more no-nonsense in the back with Alan Franco, I – yeah, I, I really like our chances of keeping a clean sheet. And how, like you already mentioned it, Dan, it's so important for us to not give away that own goal. Granted, we're not having to travel to South America or cent- or not Central or South America, Central America or Mexico. We're, you know, going to be going up to Philly. What, an hour and a half flight, something like that? Um, Who's scoring? <laughs> I think Barco and Joseph. I think they both get a goal. Okay. Um, I am going to be the odd man out this week. I think that Atlanta takes their first loss of the season tomorrow night. Um, the first team, while Alajuelense has had a strong run, I think that Atlanta caught them on their back foot and caught them a little bit surprised. I don't think that will be the case with Philly. And I think arguably um, Atlanta has had a easier path the first two weeks in MLS than Philly has with the exception of inter Miami. And I think that everyone's still trying to figure out what the hell they're going to be anyway. So that said, I think Atlanta takes a loss. Um, I'm going to say, especially because of how fast and loose they've played on defense, a team like Philly, I think, is going to punish that. Dan, based on what you broke down with having two forwards up there, I'm going to say 2-1 Philly. I'm just going to echo uh, Chiefs coach Steve. Boo, Kevin, boo! I know, I know. And our one, I think, comes from... Moreno. Mm. Sorry, I almost guys. Feel like Sorry. A meeting tomorrow. I almost Sorry, feel like guys. we need to do another pod on Wednesday. Sorry, guys. Sorry. I played a win. I played a win. I want Atlanta to win. I didn't say I want them to lose. I just think it's going to happen. Sorry. I mean, here, here he is. Here's the real Kevin. He's just coming out to try and win the points of That's the it. stupid little competition That's that we've got going. That's all he That's cares all. about. That's all I'm here for. <laughs> I I just got a good omen. Pirlo just dropped a bomb in here. Oh. It reminds me of our winning our winning years. Uh, but we have no, another game. I on, haven't on seen Saturday. Philly play, Chiefs coach Steve. I haven't. It's just feel, man. I'm just going on feel right now. I just it's too good to be true. I think that this team while Atlanta this Atlanta team is great, and I think that they're going to be great this season. I think that Philly's going to bounce back, and I just I just don't have – for whatever reason, I think that there's still too many question marks about who and how this Atlanta team is going to score, and I think that there is some concern about the back line that was evident even in the two wins that Atlanta had the first or not the win against Orlando, but the draw against Orlando and the win against Chicago. I think that there's still a lot of concern to be had. And you could argue a couple of inches one way or the other, it could easily be, you know, at least one loss, if not two, but maybe not two against Chicago because Atlanta still scored three goals. So, um, so we still have another game to get a score prediction on for this weekend, which is against New England. Dan, do you have a full report on them as well? No. Full motion time, baby. What are we thinking for scores this weekend? Against New England? Oh, geez. I totally forgot about that one. We can at least pull up what their recent results have been in league play. So New England Revolution. So their first they beat, two they beat weeks, DC on Saturday and then they drew, drew Chicago. They drew Chicago in opening week 2-2 and they beat DC United 1-0 this past weekend. So to be honest with you, I saw the a little bit of the Chicago Fire and New England game. The defending looked really nonchalant. Um it it seems as though, from what I saw, 
um, it was easy for Chicago to score those first two goals because they came pretty quick in the first half. But then it seemed as though it was just New England relying more on um, the players up front than than defending at the back. Yeah. Um, That's the thing. They have, they have a, a lot of formidable attackers. When you talk about bringing Teal Bunbury off the bench, I think that's that just shows how much depth they have up front. And we have to worry about Bo um, as well. I, yeah, I mean they have. I, I think they're. I think they're an underrated, uh, formidable team. I can't stand Bruce Arena, but he knows what he's doing when it comes to MLS. I think he's shown that uh, recently and in his championship years with uh, with LA, right? Yeah, it's. It's interesting. I mean, they are they're ranked as a, a decent team, like a good team. Like I think a few people have got them in the top, like making the playoffs in the East. Uh and like you say, Tim, they've got Gustavo Bo. Um, I mean, Busca's been playing pretty good, and then they've got Carlos um Carlos Heel afterwards, Hill. you yeah. know, backwards there. Backwards there, what am I trying to say in the back and then um, I don't know what to think of them yet. I don't really rate DC right now. I think DC have got a long, I think it's going to be a difficult season for DC. Um, I just don't think they've got the, much talent. Um, having all these Alain United cast offs. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what, uh, New England do. I think we, I mean, it's going to be on the road. How have we done usually? We have. Oh, I can't get to it. So we're five to three against New England. So five New England three. was sitting five in the MLS power rankings last week. That was obviously. Yeah. Where was Atlanta? We were pretty far down, weren't we? We were not. So, just to put into perspective, two of the team, both of the teams that Atlanta plays this week, both in Philly and New England, were in the top five in their power rankings for whatever it's worth. Um, Atlanta was ranked ninth a week ago. Certainly, they will be higher this week, um, as well as Orlando, which was also ranked seventh. I think Atlanta maybe jumps up to that seventh place spot, but we'll see. Um, but as of last week, New England was sitting in fifth um, and Philly was sitting in fourth in those power rankings. Interesting. Sorry, Tim. I got that completely wrong. Um, we've beaten them five times, drawn with them twice, and they have never beaten us. Can you believe I like that? it. I think the streak stays alive. I think it is 1-0 Atlanta on the road and Joseph's first goal in the twenty one season what was your score prediction did you say no you, you were saying the record was five to three dan uh, what's, no what's no no the record prediction? is is we've the record really five two five, and two, zero. Yeah. so i was looking at team streak so we haven't lost in five and they haven't lost in three okay but and the, that streak extends to the previous season so what did you what say you the score thinking? prediction was Mine, I'm saying 1-0 Atlanta and Joseph's first goal of the 2021 season. Uh, I'll do 2-1 Atlanta. Barco well, and Heinemann. To, do I have to choose a different score to you guys? No. Uh, I actually think 1-0 as well, but it's going to be... Hold on, hold on one second. What did you say, Barco and who, Heinemann? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Dan. One nil, I'm gonna, Atlanta. One nil, and I think it's going to be Moreno. Okay. Awesome. So let's read back through all of the Kevin hate in the trap tonight. Clearly, Team Dupe. Um, score predictions. I got to go a little ways up here to find them. Michelle four three Atlanta. Brittany S two one night, Atlanta. Yeah. This is for Philly, yeah. Atlanta 1-0 from Ev Elliot Beaven. Chiefs coach Steve 2-0. Good guys. Um, let's see. Everybody booing, booing, booing Kevin. Richard Gordon 2-0 Atlanta. Um, everybody hates Kevin. Um, 
That was it until the new score predictions, which is for New England. Brittany S. says 2-1 Atlanta United. Jeff Rollins 1-1 draw with Hindman getting the lone Scoring goal. both goals, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Own goal and a goal for them. I like it. I like it. All right. Um you can find us all online, Chiefs Coach Steve, 1-0 Atlanta. No new ratings or reviews. Feel free to leave those however you found us um, and hear those read aloud on the show. Uh, if you found us on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon to get notifications each and every time we go live and join the rest of the homies in the trap each week. Uh, find us collectively on Twitter and Instagram at home before dark. That's before spelled B and the number four. We'll have some new things to talk about next episode. We can't wait to share with you guys um, some new happenings within studio home before dark. Um, our Is this a Patreon announcement? No, it's not. A, it's not. A, it might be in two weeks, uh, Kevin. Is it two I'm weeks? Looking at the calendar, yeah, two weeks. Okay. So. Two weeks, two weeks. We got a little bit of a teasing it, but yeah, we're very excited. We're very excited. We've we've made it, guys. We're making it big time. Yeah. Um, oh, Coach Steve did leave us a review on on YouTube. I completely forgot. It said it says it says a rating on YouTube. A oh, rating, um, yeah, yeah. So, I didn't know you could leave under, ratings on YouTube. So you can go to somebody's channel and and go to the discussion, and you can oh, leave something. Yeah, he it's said the new new. Yeah, he said, for real, these guys are better than unanesthetized dental surgery. Get it. <laughs> so. I like it. I like it. Thanks, yeah, Chief, I it. Chief, 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 Coach Steve. Um, no food talk tonight. No, I mean, I guess I could talk about how Stacy and I just made a couch fort and ate Pizza Hut stuffed crust pizza all weekend, but I don't think anybody needs to hear about it because it got to be pretty disgusting by the end of the weekend. <laughs> I regret nothing. I regret nothing. Regret nothing. Yeah. No, I still need to go get a papadilla at some point. I yeah. need that Papa John's quesadilla. Um, you can find us all individually on instagram at least some on twitter some not uh dan where can they find you at you can find me at dnjms tim what about you you can find me at tim herb what does that mean kevin i'll buy you ticks and look similar enough i think he's saying he's he'll buy your tickets and they look and you guys look similar similar oh. enough <laughs> but the cameras will never know. That's great. <laughs> and That's based great. off of his profile picture, I think he's probably pretty accurate. I just gotta get that deep V going. I gotta unbutton this guy. Yeah. Find me at the architect. That's at the underscore A R C number one T E C T. Again, collectively at home before dark. That's before spelled B and the number four. Two games. So let's just hope for wins, guys. Two wins. Two games, two wins. My official record isn't two wins, but I'm hoping for two wins. Nonetheless, see you next time. As always, be home before dark.